This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute and in this video we're going to go over the ALAR ligament stability test. I'm going to have my friend Sonia come out. She's going to help me demonstrate. Now if we're doing this particular test, we're probably doing it for one of two reasons. Either we have reason to believe that Sonia has an upper cervical spine injury. In, case, in that case we want to do this test with the utmost care. We don't want to be very aggressive with this test, especially if we think there might be a DENS fracture. The other reason is maybe we're trying to clear her for high velocity cervical manipulations, which is interesting because this test is definitely more specific than sensitive and generally when we want screening or clearing exams we want higher sensitivity. Nonetheless, the test is not terribly difficult. If you take a second to look up the anatomy of your ALAR ligament, it goes from your DENS to your occiput. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to stabilize C2 and then move the head on top of C2 and make sure that when we move the head the ALAR ligament is taut enough that it moves the C2 spinous process under our fingers with each movement. All right, so let me show you guys what that'll look like is if I go just underneath the occiput and pinch, the first spinous process I feel is actually the C2 spinous process. All right, there's no spinous process on C1, so this one is definitely C2 right here. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab as much as I can and I might even end up grabbing a little bit more of the suboccipital muscles here just to make sure that it's stabilized as long as I can feel where that spinous process is under my fingers. And then with this hand, we can pull a little bit into flexion just to get her to knot a little bit, which is going to take up some of the tension of the alar ligament. And then I'm going to kind of laterally flex her upper cervical spine and rotate her upper cervical spine and I want to make sure that with every movement, I feel uh, the spinous process doing this into my fingertips, right? As long as we have movement of the spinous process into my fingertips with each movement of the head, this is a negative test. Her alar ligament is fine. Where we have a problem is when I can stabilize C2 and move her head and there's no movement of C2. And if you guys think about the anatomy, and again, look up a picture of the alar ligament so you can visualize this, you can imagine if there was a rupture of one or both of the alar ligaments, you'd move the head, that ligament would never become tight, so C2 wouldn't move with the head. All right, so once again, we're going to go right underneath the occiput here, grab C2. This takes a little bit of practice. Make sure you, you try this on a few different heads. Right, grab some different friends of different sizes. Uh, make sure you grab a couple people with like some different hairstyles because sometimes you got to feel under hair. Right? Get real used to, to stabilizing C2. And then all you're going to do is again nod a little bit, take up some slack in that alar ligament. And then it's just these tiny little movements of the upper cervical spine. Notice I'm not doing this. This is, this is lateral flexion of her whole spine. Right, I'm not rotating her whole head. No, this is not the right test, right? We're just doing these little movements to make sure I'm feeling spinous process move against my fingers. If it doesn't move, this test is positive, in which case you guys need to refer out. All right, that's a, that's, this is a biggie. This test is very specific. So if you get a positive, you have a problem Upper cervical spine instability is not something that's generally treated with physical therapy alone. If you get pain during this test, that is probably a great indicator that high velocity thrust manipulations are not appropriate for this individual. And I think I've said this in a couple videos. Remember guys, high velocity manipulations are not the end all be all. Uh, mobilizations, the research on mobilizations show that they're almost as effective or as effective as manipulation. So if she was a little tender in her upper cervical spine and I wasn't sure what was going on, but I thought mobilizations would help, right? I could still do my, my cervical mobilizations on those lower segments and see what happens. All right, guys, we're going to do a close-up recap on this video so you can see my fingers. Stay tuned. All right, guys, for your close-up recap of that ALAR ligament stability test, notice that I'm just going to kind of grab the back of Sonia's head here, and if I fall off the back of her occiput, the first spinous process I feel, and you guys can come right to the midline of the neck and, 
and feel around a little bit. Take your time. You'd, you'd better to be right and take a little bit more time than wrong and in a hurry. All right, so there's her, there's her C2 spinous process right there. I'm gonna try to get good purchase of it. Like, I'm not gonna be timid about it. You're not gonna see me like try to use my fingertips. Like, I'm gonna get good purchase around that C2. And then the only other thing to remember about this test is it's not lateral flexion of the whole neck and rotation of the whole neck. What I wanna do is lateral flexion of her upper cervical spine and rotation of her upper cervical spine. And so once I grab C2, I'm gonna grab her head a little bit, just a little bit of flexion to put some tension in that alar ligament. And then as I rotate this way, I can feel that spinous process move into my IP here. And if I move this way, I can feel it move into my thumb. Same thing when I laterally flex. And I can feel that into my thumb. If I laterally flex this way, I can feel it back into this IP here. So as long as I'm getting good motion of this, the C2 spinous process with each lateral flexion motion and rotation of her upper cervical spine, this is a negative test. Of course, if it was a positive test, we'd refer out. Show you guys one more view. Sonia, let me have you face me. Of course, I wouldn't actually do the test in this position, guys, but I want you guys to see on camera. So all I'm doing is, you know, you can kind of see a superior nuchal line here, right, on Sonia. And this is her occiput, obviously, because that would be a landmark on her occiput. And then I'm going to come down like this. And then I can go midline and feel for spinous process. That's fine. Once you feel it, just wrap your, wrap your fingers around it, right? just like so. And then you're just doing these little tiny movements and making sure again that you're feeling the spinous process just kind of do this in between your fingers. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments box below.